Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning. And to our virtual participants online joining us from around the globe, a good day to you. Welcome to the Global Young Scientist Summit 2023, or the GYSS in short. My name is Marvin from the National Research Foundation, Singapore. Now, before we kickstart the event, may I kindly request that you put your phones on silent, just so that we can all enjoy the program uninterrupted. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I would now like to invite GYSS Organizing Committee Co-Chair, Professor Lau Tsik Sing, to say a few words. Professor Lau, please. Very good morning to all of you. On behalf of the National Research Foundation and the Singapore University of Technology and Design, a very warm welcome to all of you. And we're very thankful that you know, uh, DPM Heng could be here with us. Uh, DPM Heng is the chairman of the National Research Foundation that has hosted this event for the last 11, 10 years, and this is the 11th edition. After two years hosting GYSS virtually, I'm glad we are, can all be here physically for the 11th edition of this event. We have also curated a hybrid style program where our online participants can join us from around the world. Uh, this we learned during the last two years and we found that with technology, we can have a wider reach and bring this event to many more people globally. But nothing is like having all of you here interacting with our very eminent scientists. COVID-19 has caused significant disruptions to the world, as well as to our professional and personal lives. However, we remain resilient through it all and continue to pursue our research in science and technology, making new discoveries and advancing innovation. Today, we gather here as a global scientific community, united in our passion and determination to push the frontiers of knowledge and our understanding of the world. And let us all stay true to this spirit of inclusivity and the notion that there's strength in diversity. In the face of immense global challenges, including climate change, future pandemics, there's hope in the engine of international and interdisciplinary scientific collaboration. This summit is a platform for our brilliant young scientists to learn from, to be inspired by, and to share ideas with the many eminent scientists who are here with us. To all our eminent scientists, I would like to extend our warmest gratitude and appreciation. Thank you for your support towards this summit. Many of us have been with us for many years, and we also welcome new eminent scientists who have joined us today. And we hope that you will continue to come back because we think that this is a great event that has made its mark globally. To all our participants, I encourage you to use this opportunity to advantage and learn from one another and work together towards making a positive impact on the world with science and technology. It only leaves me to wish you all a very enriching and fulfilling week ahead. Thank you very much. And as we always say, do enjoy Singapore. We have many things to offer, especially food. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Lau. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Deputy Prime Minister of Singapore, Coordinating Minister for Economic Policies, as well as the Chairman of our National Research Foundation, Minister Heng Sui Kiet, to deliver the opening address. DPM, please. Hello everyone, and welcome to the Global Young Scientist Summit 2023. Now, the banner here says excite, engage, and enable. When I walked into this room, there was so much excitement already, and you have a very exciting lecture after this on whether there's life outside Earth. And uh, I'm just standing between you. Uh, probably in terms of scientific knowledge, I, I probably rank the lowest amongst every one of you here. <laughs> But my only claim to being the Chairman of National Research Foundation is that I was the Minister for Finance whose mantra has been, money is not enough. <laughs> so I was then made Chairman of National Research Foundation. I will talk a little bit about our research uh, funding later. I'm very delighted to see so many of you here in person, the first time since COVID-19 that we are convening in a fiscal format. There are 
also many more hundreds uh, online. So for those of you who are online, welcome. Now, some of you may be here for the first time, and we have also amongst us good friends and mentors who have been supporting the summit since the start, including Her Royal Highness uh, Princess uh, Suriton. So a very warm welcome to all of you. As we exit the shadows of COVID-19, we are reminded of the critical role that science and the scientific community play in tackling global challenges. Without the prompt and significant developments in diagnostics, vaccines and therapeutics, we might still be holding this summit virtually or maybe not even virtually. While COVID-19 has not fully blown over, we must now turn our attention to the numerous other challenges that our world faces, like climate change and ageing populations. Each global challenge presents many constraints and requires difficult trade-offs. Each challenge, each advance in our understanding, also presents the opportunity to make a difference. So, what can we do? Let me share three observations. First, scientific discovery is the single most important key to breaking out of these constraints and unlocking new possibilities for humanity. Take climate change, for example. Based on our current scientific knowledge, it is unlikely that we will achieve a net zero world by 2050. To continue to uplift the lives of billions of people, we must find new and better ways. New ways of scientific innovation and breakthroughs will be needed to get us to net zero. From making existing low carbon technologies like hydrogen and batteries more economically viable, to exploring new possibilities like nuclear, nuclear fusion, fission and deep geothermal energy. Science will be the driving force for tackling global challenges. In this sense, the global scientific community carries hope for humanity. Second, scientific discovery does not occur within a vacuum. Instead, the work is iterative with successive generations of scientists building upon one another's work, often over a long time. Take the 2022 Nobel Prize in Physics, which was won by Ulan Asfakt, John Clauser and Ant Anton Zeilinger for their work in quantum mechanics. Nearly 90 years ago, Einstein described quantum entanglement, the phenomenon in which states of particles depend on each other regardless of the distance between them as spooky action at a distance. In the subsequent decades, physicists all over the world contributed to the body of work around this spooky phenomenon. They proposed theories, conducted experiments, and deepened our understanding. Together, they pushed the boundaries and built the foundation for quantum computing and cryptography. And this brings me to my final observation. The three laureates I highlighted are of different nationalities. Aspect is French, uh, Closer is American, and Zeilinger is Austrian. This is a true beauty of science, its ability to bring together people from different cultures, nationalities, and religions in pursuit of the common mission of growing scientific knowledge. This global collaborative aspect of science is reflected in our audience here today. Collectively, you come from 106 institutions across 32 countries, and this is our largest turnout, by the way. You each bring together expertise and passion in different scientific views. Over the next few days, you will have the opportunity to connect with and learn from one another, spark new insights, and inspire new collaborations. This spirit of collaboration is especially salient in today's world, which is fraught with geopolitical tensions and economic uncertainty. Strategic competition between major powers has intensified and countries are preoccupied with high inflation and other domestic challenges. At times, political rhetoric has been fracturing. As a result, global cooperation has slowed or even stalled in some areas. In this environment, science and the scientific community can serve as a ballast. By providing objectivity and rigour in a world where discourse may be tempered by politics and disagreement, by sustaining collaboration and cooperation to advance scientific knowledge, notwithstanding the ups and downs of international relations, and by bringing together the best minds to study and develop solutions for challenges that affect us all 
regardless, regardless of nationality and political beliefs. So it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to Singapore and to this summit. And we have the opportunity to renew old connections and build fresh ones in the coming days. Incidentally, our co-chair of the organizing committee said that, you know, we welcome you to, to eat more in Singapore. And I was just telling some of our participants that, you know, they, we have only, uh, we are such a small place, we only have two uh, UNESCO cultural heritage. One is our botanic gardens, which is a UNESCO cultural heritage site. And the other is intangible cultural heritage, which is hawker food. So if you have not taken hawker food since coming to Singapore, you have not been to Singapore. By the way, there are many good ones in, in, in this part of uh, Singapore too, because this part happened to be my constituency. <laughs> yeah. So we are here at the Singapore University of Technology and Design, and with our president, Tao Chong, here. Now you might have noticed some beautiful heritage houses harmoniously blending into a sleek modern campus. This is very much the Singapore character, bringing together different perspectives through a commitment to nurture, grow, and create value. This is how we systematically built up our scientific base from scratch. Our research innovation and enterprise ecosystem reflects the systematic investments we have made over the past 30 years, from growing basic research capabilities and driving technology translation to strengthening our enterprises' innovation capabilities and nurturing a strong talent base. And in our latest RIE 2025 plans, we have committed US $19 billion to strengthen and diversify our ecosystem. So I, I allocated that sum when I was the Minister for Finance, so we are safe for the next few years. <laughs> We warmly welcome you to collaborate and grow, grow with us, be it through a fellowship here or new research partnerships. Now this morning, we are honoured to have Professor Didier Carlo leading the, lead the opening plenary session. Now Professor Carlo and his colleagues' discovery of an exoplanet orbiting a solar-type star led to their 2019 Nobel Prize in Physics. His reflections on planetary systems will be a fitting start to the summit to inspire us to look beyond the edge of our observable universe and to push the limits of science research. We also welcome 20 other plenary speakers and panellists who are distinguished leaders in their respective fields. I'm sure you'll be inspired by the sense of wonder, curiosity and purpose. So I encourage you to participate actively in the Young Scientist presentations, explore collaborations through networking sessions, and connect with your fellow researchers at social programs. We hope that the Young Global Scientists Summit will continue to forge stronger global partnerships and collaborations in science and technology. So I wish you all a fruitful summit and an enjoyable stay in Singapore. Thank you. Thank you very much, DPM, for the extremely uplifting opening. Now, ladies and gentlemen, next is a short video about the GYSS and how it endeavours to keep the spark of scientific curiosity burning bright. By giving aspiring scientists opportunities to hear and engage with the world's leading minds. So, ladies and gentlemen, please sit back and enjoy. After three years of the global pandemic, Singapore is proud to once again welcome one and all to our annual Global Young Scientists Summit. Over the last decade, the GYSS has hosted 92 esteemed speakers and more than 4,500 participants from over 40 countries. The brightest minds coming together to discuss science and technology trends, interact and engage with fellow researchers, and move the conversation forward on how science can address global challenges. This year, GYSS welcomes 21 eminent scientists 
of which six are attending GYSS for the first time. They are primed to excite, engage and enable young minds across four exciting days of plenary lectures and panel discussions. The Singapore University of Technology and Design is hosting this edition of GYSS. I think the summit is extremely interesting in that it brings together early career researchers as well as professionals that are extremely established in their own fields of research to come together and discuss some of the more poignant topics relating to research as well as the development of certain fields. So I'm quite looking forward to what kind of discussions that this will actually yield. As a first-time participant, I'm looking forward to the small group sessions with Nobel Prize winners. Participants can look forward to the Young Scientist presentations and poster sessions and they can also explore the links between academia and industry. Let the conversations begin!